2002, the Adelaide Mount Lofty Rangers Natural Resources Management Board has been investing in projects in the region looking at dung beetle populations. Some of these projects have included researching where dung beetles don't exist. And as part of those projects, we've put together a series of videos. These videos are designed to help you understand how important dung beetles are and the role they play in your landscapes, how you can establish them, and then how you manage and monitor maintaining those populations and helping and supporting those beetles grow in the region. So sit back and enjoy Dr. Bernard Dobe as he takes you through the benefits of having healthy dung beetle populations in your landscape. Australia's national herd is 28 million cattle and together these produce enough dung to smother at least 200,000 hectares of productive land each year. One of the serious consequences of unburied dung sitting on the soil surface is that it provides breeding medium for pests and diseases, in particular the dung breeding flies and gut parasites. Another consequence of unburied dung is that it fouls the pasture and this dung can sit around for months or even years and so it prevents grass growing underneath the pad. As stocking rates increase, so the potential for pasture fouling also increases. And with high stocking rates, you can lose even up to five or even 10% of your pasture due to pasture fouling. Unburied dung is also known as a source of nutrient pollution for inland waterways and for catchments. In Australia, dung beetles have shown to have great potential in managing animal wastes in agriculture. One of the major benefits of dung beetles is they improve soil health. And with mature dung beetle populations, we can have a 20-30% increase in pasture production. Around the world, there are about 7,000 species of dung beetle, and in Australia we do have about 480 species of native dung beetle, but most of these are adapted to marsupial droppings which are hard, dry and pelletised. The native dung beetles are poorly adapted to dealing with the cattle dung. So uh, the cattle dung accumulated on the pastures for years, and uh, then CSIRO came into the picture and in the mid-60s we began a program in which we introduced dung beetles to Australia from southern Europe and from Africa. Over 50 species were brought in and now 23 of those are established and they're doing a great job. Dung beetles come in many sizes. There are some as small as pinheads and others as large as that. The dung beetles tunnel into the ground, bring soil to the surface and bury the dung in the tunnels and in this dung they lay eggs and the eggs hatch into larvae and then grow through to the adults. The real way in which they can be recognised as being different from each other is the way in which they deal with dung. Boar rollers are um, one group of dung beetles and they make up about 20% of the total number of dung beetle species in the world and they can't fly to a dung pad um, and then carve off a piece of dung, turn it into a ball and roll it away and then they bury it. And once it's buried then they lay eggs in it and those eggs hatch into larvae and grow through to the adults. Tunnelers create tunnels directly underneath or adjacent to the dung pad. They bring a lot of subsoil to the surface and once the tunnels are complete then they fill them with dung and uh, lay eggs in the dung and the eggs hatch into larvae and they grow through to adults. Well the pad dwellers are, are really not very important from the point of view of dung burial. In the dung that is not buried by the ball rollers and the tunnelers and in those they create chambers and in those chambers they create little balls of dung and lay an egg in each of those balls of dung. And there's a fourth group called the kleptoparasites which uh, or kleptocoprids, which um, are kind of parasites on the buried dung of other beetles. Of the 23 species that are currently established in the field in Australia, uh, the introduced species from Europe and Southern Africa, uh, 21 of them are tunnelers and two only are ball rollers. It's also important to remember that dung beetles are active in different seasons of the year. So there are some beetles for summer, some for winter, some for autumn and some for spring. Currently in Australia we have established winter active species in southern Australia and summer active species in summer and northern Australia. But we need new species for the other seasons of the year.
The process of burying dung and creating tunnels into the soil means that dung beetles play a key role as soil architects. Dung beetles break down dung, feeding on the juices and depositing their own waste and the remaining dried dung fibres across the soil profile. As they tunnel, they mix surface soils and subsoils with dung nutrients, creating air spaces and increasing the water permeability of the soils. By processing dung, the beetles reduce pasture fouling, but they also improve soil nutrient status and reduce polluting runoff waters. Dung burial across the soil profile is also a form of carbon storage in the soil and significant as agriculture is a major emitter of greenhouse gases. Clearly from what we've seen, dung beetles are a terrific thing for, uh, for the farming community, uh, but before you go out and get your dung beetles, it's best to look at the next two videos so that you can see how to get them, how to manage them, and also how to resolve some of the threats that challenge them. And if you'd like to find out more, please contact your local natural resources centre.